Good morning, beloved. Trust you are well this beautiful Friday morning. Our daily devotional scripture comes from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, from verse 3. And the Bible says, The Lord has appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. This uh, scripture was talking to the Israelites. God was talking to them about the love that he had for them and he was trying to tell them that he was going to fulfill the pledge the pledge that he has made to them to gather them and to take them to their promised land which was Canaan. So God is talking to us today that he has loved us with an everlasting love. He says that is the love that he has for us is not going to end. It is an ending. The love that he made to us during those days of old to our father Abraham is still the love that he has for us today and, and even in our generations to come. So I want to encourage you today do not feel like God has forsaken you. Looking at the journey of the Israelites, how God was able to redeem them from the bondage of slavery that, that they were in in Egypt. How God fulfilled the promise that he had made to their father Abraham. And how God took them to the promised land, despite that even when they were in the wilderness, the Israelites constantly sinned. And, and they did things against God, but still God did not forsake them. So I want to encourage you today. It doesn't matter what you have gone through in your life. It doesn't matter the kind of sin that, that you feel that you've committed. God is saying that he has loved us with an everlasting love and he's going to draw us with his unfailing kindness. So as long as you go before the Lord with a repentant heart, his promise in your life is surely going to come to pass. Do not allow the enemy enemy to make you feel like you're guilty, like you're worthless before God. Remember, he so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son so that we can be redeemed from the curse of sin. And that is why we can confidently declare that God loves us so much. If he did not love us, he would not have sent his son to come and die for our sins. So I want you to know today that you are not worthless. You may have committed sins. You may have gone, done things that are not acceptable. But God is saying that he loves us. After all the things that the Israelites did in the wilderness, they even worshipped idols. They committed fornication and adultery. They did all sorts of things against God. But still the love of God was did not wither for in their case. God still delivered them to the promised land. So I want to encourage you that the promise of God in your life will surely be fulfilled in Jesus' name. Do not despise yourself because God loves you. If you have done something that you feel is not worthy in the eyes of God, just go before your Father in heaven. Ask Him to forgive you because the Bible says His mercies endures forever. And I know He's going to take you back. Just like what happened with the prodigal son. After he took everything from his father and he went to another land and he squandered everything that he had. And then in the end he said, I want to go back to my father because my father's servants are eating and sleeping in a better place than than I am. And he, when he went back, his father did not look at what he has done. His father did not consider all the bad things that he has done, but his father took him. And his father slaughtered the best of cattle for him. And his father held a celebration. His father clothed him in purple linen. That is loyalty. So the Lord is saying, even when you draw further from God and then you want to come back, do not let anything stop you. And this message is directed to people that feel like they have backslidden. People that feel like they are not sure of their work with Christ. Even it's also directed to some believers that at times feel guilty. They feel like they are not worthy. These are the ideas and the memories that the enemy wants to plant in your mind so that you think that your father in heaven does not love you. But God loves us so much to the extent that he doesn't want any of us to perish. You remember the Bible talks about a story of a shepherd that has a hundred sheep and one of the sheep get lost and the hundred sheep uh, the, the shepherd leaves the 99 until he goes to search for the one. And once he gets the one, he comes back with it and he holds a celebration. 
we are told of the story of someone that has ten coins and one of the coins disappear and is left with nine. He sweeps the whole house. He lights his lamp so that he can look it for it. And finally, when he finds the one coin, the one silver coin, he rejoices. He calls his neighbors to come and celebrate with him, to come and rejoice with him for this, for the, for the one that was lost has been found. And that is the joy of our Father in heaven. When one sheep is found, when one, one sheep that was lost, when one coin that was lost is found, that is the joy that is in heaven when you give your life to Christ. That is the joy that takes place in heaven. So I want you to know that God loves you with an everlasting love. And he says that he's going to draw you with unfailing kindness. That means he's going to draw you back to him with an unfailing kindness. He's going to gather you back to him with an unfailing kindness. Because remember, he's your father. He created you. He has a purpose for your life. I want you to know that you have an assignment that you need to fulfill. So do not live a careless life. Ask God to reveal your assignments to you. Ask God to reveal your calling to you. Let God show you the way that you should go. Do not allow the enemy to mislead you. Do not allow the enemy to, to, to take you to the wrong places. Just ask God to direct your thoughts. Ask God to guide you. And I know you will not have a reason to regret in Jesus' name. Just know that God is concerned about your salvation is concerned about your salvation so much and that is why he has done so many things to draw you close he has spoken to you in your dreams he is speaking to you through visions he is speaking to you through 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 his servants the men and women of god he is speaking to you through each and every avenue just to get your attention so I want you to focus. I want you to make that decision in your life that I'm going to give my life to Christ that I do not want to live like this anymore. I want to live to serve God because eventually this world is not our own. We are all in a journey. We are journeying. We are just here temporarily, but we are going to our permanent home. So I want you to ask yourself, which permanent home are you going to go to? Which permanent home are you going to go to? Are you going to go to hell or are you going to go to heaven? Because eventually you will end up in one of those places. Mm. I want you to think about your life. I want you to think about your life. What do you want your life to end up like? Do you want to say, I wish I knew? I declare that that shall not be your portion in Jesus' name. So if you are not sure about your salvation, if you have not given your life to Christ, I want you to say this after me. Say, O oh Lord God, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. I believe with all my heart in Jesus, the Son of the living God. I believe he died for me and God raised him from the dead. I believe is alive today. I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is the Lord of my life from this day. Through him and in his name I have eternal life. I am born again. Thank you Lord for saving my soul. I am now a child of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Congratulations. You've made the best, best decision of your life. And I'm going to be praying with you that your salvation is going to be established. Your walk with Christ is going to be established in Jesus' name. Every obstacle that the enemies shall raise against your salvation, I rebuke and I reverse it in Jesus' mighty name. So right now, I will urge you to join a, a, a Bible-believing church. Join a church that talks about Jesus Christ and connect with them. Let them help you in your walk of salvation. And I know you will not regret in Jesus' name. So thank you so much for watching this devotional series today. I trust you've been blessed. If today was your first time watching, please subscribe to the channel and share to your family and friends. Maybe through you, someone is going to give their life to Christ. Maybe through you, we are going to recover that one lost sheep.
For those that have been part of this devotional family, share out this message to as many people as possible. Let us spread the message of the cross. Let us win souls because time is running out. Time is not in our hands and we all have to do something to make sure that none of our brothers and sisters perish. So that is why you have to share this message. Today it was a special message that God laid in our hearts and in our spirits. And as this message reaches you i pray that you are going to be blessed i pray that you are going to touch to be touched i pray that it is going to touch the life of someone to give their life to christ so thank you have a blessed blessed day in jesus mighty name and as you go out there you can talk to someone tell them about jesus tell them about christ and i know they are going to be blessed Salvation is not a task of just one person. Winning souls is not a task of just one person. Winning souls is a responsibility of all children of God, not just pastors, not just people who are called to preach the word. Winning souls is a responsibility of each and every one of us. That is why we have to take it upon ourselves to make sure that we carry out this assignment. So thank you so much. God bless you. Have a blessed day. Let us share out and share the devil in Jesus name. Amen.